Hello, I'm Michael from Evit. Um, I'm here at the Media Composer port at NAB and I'm going to show you a few of the new upcoming features for Media Composer. So we have a wide variety of things that we're showing and starting with the new format settings. So going to your format tab, you can see we do have now 18K and 16K projects. Um, so for that very high quality media, I can use my Media Composer and as you can see here in my timeline, I do already have my DNX HR HQX media in 8K available. And hitting the playback button, I can play it back in real time on that nice little setup by where we're using here a Dell Position and a Dell 8K monitor to showcase that feature. Um, even said that, uh, while I'm playing back the media, I can go and influence, but load up a little more uh, a little longer timeline so like I do have this timeline here with a lot of UHD media in starting playback you can see I, I can zoom in here and zoom out I can enable and disable my waveforms I can even go over and um, edit some of the metadata in my bin while all the time the live timeline is going ahead playing back the media on the full screen, so if you're sitting with your producer, you can easily go ahead, start working on something while he is monitoring um, the video content. So another topic I'm showing is uh, what we call the global DVE. Uh, global DVE is a good thing whenever you find you're in a situation where you need to animate multiple pictures and pictures, and just for performance issues, uh, performance improvements let me take the draft modality mode so I can run over here um, so basically that is a nested DVE effect so I do have four picture and pictures effect in the background but I do have a global effect on top of it so if I go to my effect editor area you can see I do have um, a section where I can influence all the individual pictures and pictures so like selecting the fish down here, I can change the size of the individual ones. But as well, I can go to my global DV effect and change like the positioning or the rotation, the scaling um, overall. So I can, for example, zooming in to that section here, I can do some, some rotation. Um, let me enable that feature. So I can see I can zoom in and out uh, in that global DVE effect, DVE effect without influencing the background at all. So you see the background stays always the same and, and can play with that multiple DVE effect. Yeah, going further down the road, multi-camera editing. Uh, so what's new and great about that? Um, you might be familiar with multi-camera and I can do that. Let me quickly select a few shots. And go to my group clip. Um, and I can do the grouping by source time code and waveform analysis. So once I've created my group, I have it here and maybe later on I find out I do have to re-edit that group. So something that was not possible in the past, I can now load up that group into my timeline view. So I get a representation of what's going on in my group in my timeline. So that gives me the flexibility to start and for example, trim in one of these shots or to move the media around which means I could uh, easily fix sync problems. As well I could add another track to my timeline, snap that in and have a new member in my timeline. You can see now it's filled up my fourth layer. Or I could put in um, sections of another shot so I can really kind of build up my sync mat inside of the group. So I can deal with different um, camera angles, I can uh, deal with sync issues, I can create a full sync map inside of the group um, in my multi-camera mode. So that group then could be updated or I could create a new group out of that. Currently I, I do the updates group which means now it's all committed um, to the grouping. So now I do have my five cameras into my group included. Um, another area we're working on is the uh, 
color correction. So if you're a Symfony user and you uh, want to work with a shape-based correction, you can do that now. So jumping into my correction mode, and let me bring that up a little bit for you, you see here on the right-hand side, we do have the new tools for creating shapes and doing animations on that, in including tracking. And as you can see, I can uh, select whether I want to influence the base layer or the shape layer. Um, so what does that mean? I can, um, for example, uh, currently I'm going to select the base layer, so the background, and going to change the color of my background layer. Or if I go to my controls, I may want to darken that a little bit. So I bring down the luminance of the background layer. I may want to desaturate the whole stuff. I can do that as well without changing the color um, of his face. So by the release, we will do all these tools inside the color grading tool. Currently, I'm um, here showing that I can, can use all my effect editor as well to do things like that. So I can create my shape here. I do have all the uh, controls available within the effect editor. Another uh, thing we, we showcasing here at that part is what we call the editorial on demand. So editorial on demand gives you the new flexibility to work with a virtual media composer in the Asia cloud. And to do that, I do have my little PC of IP client here and open that up. Just showing brings me into the timeline or into a media composer which is living completely in the Asia cloud. So it looks like a media composer, it behaves like a media composer, it is a media composer, but it's not the media composer that I've installed on my local machine here. It do have an outstanding performance. So I, um, if I open up my, my project here, I can very easily scrub through my whole timeline. Uh, it's very fast in response, so I can anytime start and stop, uh, even do my, my JKL um, editing in the timeline, and it's, it's really very responsive. So the system I'm using system I'm using is, you can see that here on my uh, Microsoft Asia dashboard. It's a virtual machine and that's my Media Composer 1. Here at the booth we have three Media Composers connected to the same environment so you can have a Media Composer editorial that you access on that virtual machine in the data center. And the data center we're using here is Texas, um, San Antonio in Texas. In the beginning I talked a bit about the 8K and 16K and the UHD performance that we might gonna have and of course to provide that we're using here a Nexus E2 SSD. So it's a full flash um, Nexus system that gives me the data speed that I needed for UHD media. In conjunction with the Nexus I can use a tool that I've installed here which calls the editorial management. So editorial management gives me from the media composer a quick look into my Nexus. So open up the editorial management window inside Media Composer. I can go to my shared project workspace and I can open up another project. Here find the bins from the other project and I am um, going to open up some of the, um, the media that I want to use. So for example, uh, looking into that bin here, I do have some um, media that I can bring in and then I can, can use that media inside my Media Composer uh, in the new project. Okay, so that's a rough overview on what we are showing here at the Avid booth on the Media Composer video editing part. Um, if you're around here, pass by, say hello. I'm going to give you a deeper run to uh, these nice feature set at the NAB show. Thank you.